So for my last video of the year, or maybe the first of next year, I want to give you a list of my top 10 favorite episodes of Pokemon Journeys this year. We've had a pretty good stretch of episodes this year. Some of them were great, some weren't. So today I'll be giving you my favorites based on what I personally enjoy the most. This list will be based on episodes 50 through 92, so that's 42 episodes, and I'll be picking my top 10 favorite from those. But first, I want to give you my honorable mentions, starting with episode 56, with Ash meeting and training with Wilkstrom of the Kalos Elite for. We didn't get to see them have a traditional battle, but Ash getting to meet and train with him as a part of the Farfetch'd training arc was pretty cool. My next honorable mention is episode 76, Ash's return to Alola. It was cool seeing Ash go back again, and this time he actually got acknowledged as the champion, which really put into perspective how far Ash has come since he first started in episode 1. My favorite part of the episode was probably him having fans. My third honorable mention is episode 89. This was part of the winter special featuring Dialga and Pokia, where Dawn returned for a second time and they went to another world. I thought the other world plotline was pretty interesting, and it was pretty cool how they incorporated Dawn and the other characters from another world. I think my favorite thing that came out of that was seeing that the alternate Dawn took second place in the Sinnoh League. My last honorable mention is episode 92, where Ash got Gigantamax Gengar, which officially set him up to use all of the battle gimmicks when in battle. So with my honorable mentions out of the way, let's begin. So starting at number 10, we have episode 83. This was Cynthia's return, and in it we learned about a girl named Kiara who lost her Cluffa after it passed away. And I really like this episode because it borrowed elements from Pokemon Movie 3 Spell of the Unknown and used them to tell its own story. It was another one of those episodes where Pokemon tackled a serious problem like death like in Sun and Moon and was able to turn it into a beautiful story and I love the way how they naturally incorporated Cynthia into this episode. So moving on to number 9 we have episode 75 and this was the second part of the Dark Ryan Cresselia special featuring Dawn and this was a pretty solid episode. We got to see Dawn teach Chloe about what it means to follow your dreams while also telling Chloe that she could take her time finding what her dream is. And later on we got their reunion with Ash and Dawn for the first time since the black and white anime. I also like how we got a reference to Brock which was pretty cool and although the episode didn't live up to the hype for a Dawn return, it was still a pretty solid episode overall when you consider what Dawn was able to teach Chloe. So next is number 8 and we have episode 85. This was part 1 of the 2 part battle with Ash and B and I really like this episode for multiple reasons. The first is Ash getting to meet and talk to B beforehand so they could get accustomed to each other. I also like how Karina tagged along to see the battle and meet with B since we got confirmation that they're actually friends and the episode ended with the start of the battle and Leon showing up too which was pretty hype and made for a great overall start to the two part battle. So moving on to number 7 I have episode 60. This was Ash's last match with Rinto who he met in a previous episode and lost to but this time he and Farfetch got their rematch in a battle in which it evolved into Sir Fetch and with it came the end to Farfetch's character development arc which was pretty well done. So this episode having not only a great battle but also character development in terms of a power up and Ash and Farfetch overcoming the odds are why I have it at number 7. So at number 6 I have episode 84 and in this episode every Pokemon anime fans dream came true from Gen 6 and no Ash didn't with the Kalos League but he did get the Mega and Keystone needed to Mega evolve his Lucario. And this was a milestone moment for multiple reasons, the first being Ash getting a Mega Evolution which is something we've wanted since it was first announced. The second reason being that he got it for Lucario, probably the one Pokemon everyone wanted Ash to have the most since the Lucario movie in Gen 3. And the third, this not only set us up for a great battle with Ash versus B, but also gave us an idea as to what Ash is willing to do to win the World Championships and the possibilities of what we may see later on down the line. Overall, this made for a really good episode. And so that brings me to my top 5. And at number 5 I have episode 68. And this was the start of the Project Mew arc where we learned what it would entail. And in this episode we got the return of Gary, who we haven't seen since the Diamond and Pearl anime. And the return of Ash's old Pokemon, even though a few of them were missing, that didn't take away from us getting to see them all together again. Especially since we got to see Ash battle with Infernape again against Moltres. It was also cool seeing Gary back in action again while also competing against Go as a way to inspire him to take part in the Project Mew trial. And the one other thing I really liked was how well Ash and Gary got along and respected each other showing maturity on both sides. Making this easily one of my favorite episodes. 
So now for the top four, or what I like to call the elite four of episodes. I knew these episodes were going to be the top four, I just had no idea what placement they would be, and I could honestly argue for all of them in different places, but this will be my final order for now. So coming in at four, we have episode 86, and this was the second part of the Ash vs. B final rematch. Not much to explain, we got the debut of Ash using Mega Lucario, which was a dream scenario for all of the fans, and in an epic rival battle against B in Ultra Class, where we got to see it battle against Max Machamp. It was really cool getting to see Ash and Lucario put their bond to the test with Mega Evolution and battling against B. So this battle definitely ranks as a top 10 rival battle for me all time and a top 4 episode of this year. So at number 3 we have episode 74 Dawn's Return in the Dark Ryan Cresselia special. The first major thing I want to talk about is the fact that Dawn returned for the first time since the black and white anime. I didn't think we'd ever see Dawn return in the anime again but she did as a way to promote Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I think the best thing about this return aside from Dawn herself is the character development for Chloe, with her deciding to set out on her own for a bit before eventually meeting Dawn and traveling with her on a little adventure. And with Dawn teaching and showing her new things along the way, like a contest move, I think this made for a really nice episode and a meeting between the two, so even though the return was lacking when it comes to Dawn, I think this was a great episode for Chloe and her development. So now we're at the final two and I really liked both of these episodes for different reasons. So for number two I have episode 77 ultra exciting from the shocking start. This was Ash's first ultra class battle and it was against Volkner, the 8th gym leader of Sinnoh making for the perfect opponent. And this is probably the best battle of the series so far when it comes to combat and tactics. Ash and Volkner were both using strategy and the skills of their Pokemon to match and counter each other at every turn and one of my favorite moments of the battle was when Volkner did that switch from Rotom into Electivire after Rotom was caught in Pikachu's Electro Web, which Volkner wasn't expecting since obviously Ash couldn't use that the last time they battled, which was a nice callback and I also like how they referenced their previous battle at the beginning of the episode. But the biggest highlight of the episode to me was Ash deciding to bring back and use his Z-Ring and a Z-Move with Pikachu. Not only was it unexpectedly hype and great to see again, but Ash used it in the most dramatic finish where it overpowered Electivire's ability to absorb electricity, leading to its defeat. And at the end of the episode, even after the hype of Ash's win against Volkner, we find out that Cynthia is also in the World Championships and is in the Masters 8. Plus we got to see that Leon and Raihan were watching the battle, which only puts into perspective how important all these battles are. Overall this made for an amazing episode and one of the best episodes of the year and the series in general and that's why I have it in my number two spot and now that brings me to my number one spot which should be pretty obvious since it isn't already here episode 65 Ash vs Iris so imagine the hype from the Volkner return in a battle and make that an old companion that we haven't seen in three generations and to add to that they're now the champion the strongest trainer of the region and Ash has to face them to get into the next class of the world championships making this a battle between champions with everything on the line so with all these factors the episode was already going to be exciting and interesting to watch but what really made the episode for me was not only seeing Iris and having the battle, but seeing how far she's come as a Dragon Master in training and how far she's progressed. My favorite moment in the episode was when she was able to connect with Dragonite during the battle and her reasons for doing that. Even though it eventually cost her the battle, it's because not only that she's a champion but also a Dragon Master from the Village of Dragons that she thought of Dragonite before anything else. Which says a lot about Iris and who she is, so even though I think Ash vs Volkner was the better battle when it comes to the skill and strategy involved, I think this individual battle means a lot more when you consider Iris and all those factors and the fact that we got to see and learn what Iris has been up to since her departure at the end of the black and white series. So when you consider all those factors and the fact that this battle took Ash into the top 100, this is definitely my favorite episode of 2021. With that being said, those were my top 10 favorite episodes of 2021. I can't wait to see what the new year brings with characters like Marnie and Piers appearing soon. So be sure to give me your top 5 or 10 episodes in the comment section below or one that you think should have made this list and let me know what you're looking forward to next year in Pokemon Journeys. With that being said, thank you to everyone who's been watching and bye.